Welcome to Specific Love. Here are 20 more simple French cleat ideas for your workshop or home. If you haven't seen the first video, I'll put a link to that in the description. Otherwise, let's begin. A pocket hole jig is an awesome tool to have, but sometimes it is a pain to store away or just to go find. So I've created this awesome wall mount to make it easy access. Now this is a pretty simple build. I used some three quarter inch plywood that I cut to the width of the actual jig. Then I added some side risers over here. And these are great so that when you're trying to do your pocket hole, there's less chance of them falling off the sides. This also gives a little extra strength to the plywood so it's less likely to warp over time. This was made just from some two by fours cut down to the same height as the actual jig. Now to hold most of the accessories, I just have a simple plastic organizer. I just cut and notched out where it need to be and just remove some of the additional slots. But all in all, you can organize this any way you want. Now to hold this to the actual piece of wood, just use some basic Velcro that I use some super glue and it's easily attached right to the side and it'll stay nice and firm. You don't have to worry about it falling off the wall, but it's easily removable just in case you ever need to. Now that we have a wall mounted jig, we need a way to hold some of its screws and accessories. This is a relatively simple design. Have a double set of shelves here to hold some screws and some of the additional pieces from the jig. On the sides here, I just used some plywood to give it some strength and some one by fours here for the shelving. If you notice here, it is a slight angle that is about a 10 degree so that as things are sitting on it and things get vibrated or move around, they're gonna slide towards the back and not have to worry about sliding off the front. Now the back is relatively simple. Just using a cleat that runs across and I'm using the support of these sides to act as the barrier against the wall to hold it nice and firm. This is a simple design. It can be used in many different configurations or many different needs and I hope you can use it too. Now if you like building with your lathe, here's a great way to store some of your high speed tools. It's a real simple holder that has a hole on one side and a slot in the other so it's easy access. You don't have to worry about them falling off and you can keep them nice and organized. Let me show you how I built this. Now for the backing, I'm using just a simple piece of plywood, but for the supports, it's just some simple one buys. I used a Forstner bit to cut out the appropriate size holes for my tools, and I did the same on a second piece. But in addition to that, I cut some angles using my bandsaw. You don't have to use those exact tools, but just as long as this has an angle and this has a nice hole for everything to fit in, it should work well. On the back, I added not only the French cleat, but an additional support. So when this is on the wall and you're pulling your tools away, it just gives it a little bit more support against the wall. You don't have to worry about it moving around. Very simple, very easy design. Now for those of you who prefer carbide tools, this is a real simple design. Where the tool just slide up there and it sits nice and firm on the base. Let me show you how I built this one. Now for this setup, I used some plywood and some one buys, but in a little bit different configuration. On the top here, I used a four string bit to cut the holes all the way through. And down here, I also used a four string bit, but this was at a slight angle. That would create a little bit of a cup here on the outside. But I didn't go all the way through because I wanted this to be nice and solid. And when you put it up on the wall, and you add one of your tools, a little cutout creates a nice little resting point. You don't have to worry about it falling off. It's a great way to store some of your carbide tools. Now when you're in your shop, it's always a good idea to have a spare flashlight. So in case the lights go out or you just need an extra light, you can grab it easily. But you just don't want to have it just sitting around because you can easily misplace it. So I created this nice little holder. This is a rechargeable version that comes with an extra battery and its own little charging system. So I created a little holder for the flashlight using a Forstner bit. Then over here, two little mini shelves. One of them here, I have used some double-sided tape to hold down the actual charger. And then I created some lips on the second one so that I can have the plug and it doesn't want to slide off. But that's a great way that you can move this around your shop wherever you need to, take it off, put it in the plug, put it back, and move it again wherever it needs to go. Hand planes are awesome tools, especially if you're trying to smooth out your wood or do some nice fine woodworking. The only challenge is sometimes these can be a little bit hard to store because you don't want to store them straight face down because it'll be dulling your blade. So you want to store them on the side, but you don't want to accidentally knock them off your shelves. So I created this awesome little holder so that we can store them right here on the wall. Up here on the top too, just in using the standard hand planes, I have side supports here so it keeps them from sliding off the edge. 
But down here on the third shelf, I do not have anything supporting on the sides because I plan on buying a larger jack plane. Down here in the bottom here, I'm planning on getting some smaller planes and this would be a great little area to store those. Overall, this is a great way to store your planes on your wall. When you're buying bits, whether it's drill bits or Forstner bits, a lot of times they come in really unique and useful cases. So instead of getting rid of this, I decided to just add to it. I glued on a piece of wood, added a French cleat. That way when it's hanging on a wall, I can open it up, get out the piece I need, close it up. It keeps the sawdust out, keeps them nice and organized. When it comes to the drill bits, the case here, I added a French cleat. It can sit on the wall. Or, if you want, you can always add one on each side, and that way it'll stay open permanently. In either case, this is a great way that you can store your stuff up on a wall with very little work. Now, brad nailers are awesome tools to have, especially if you can have a cordless version. I recently purchased this. I love using it. In fact, I've used this on a bunch of the French cleats that I built. So, I created its own little holder. Very simple, it slides in, and not only does it rest down here, but I used a little lip so that if it leans forward, it's not gonna easily fall out. Now, if you're using just a standard version that hooks up to the air, now this is a much lighter tool than this, especially with the added weight of the batteries. And so, in this case, if you're gonna be building something similar, you don't necessarily need to have this lower shelf. I did that because of the weight of this tool. I don't wanna take any chance of it breaking off from here. So keep that in mind depending on which tool you have. Otherwise, this is a great way to store your brad nailer and it's also easy access. You can grab it underneath. Now as my saw collection starts to grow, I need a great way to store these, especially get them off of my shelves and just store them up on the wall. So I created this awesome little holder and I'll show you how to make this. Now this is a really simple design even though it has a lot of different shapes to it. I just took a large piece of plywood for the back so it's nice and sturdy. On the front here is just a couple dowels. This was this big dowel is actually just a piece of old furniture that I cut down and then I had some additional pieces. I used a drill to drill out the holes and so that it sits nice and firm and glued it in place. On the sides here was just a 1x4 that I cut into a triangle so that it gives it just a little angle. And it's a neat configuration. You're using straight, angled, and circle edges. Just give it a nice little look. On the top here, I used, I believe it was a 1x that I cut down just to the depth I needed. I put slots in it roughly an inch and a half apart. You can do this in any width you want. This just worked out well for me. And as you put the saw in place, these little slots work well at holding it nice and sturdy. Now I do have a second piece down here and this is for some of my shorter saws that won't fit all the way to the top but they fit well right in there. But I do have everything lined up with these lower and upper slots so that just in case I do need to add a large saw it will not only fit in the bottom it'll fit in the top and everything will be nice and straight. Now with it hanging up in the wall, I made sure to utilize some of this excess space up here that would normally be dead space, but works great with the length of the saws. So you have a dolly to move stuff around, but you don't have a good place to store it. I have a great way to fix that. Right here on these dollies, you can pull back this carpet and cut it back, and then you can attach a nice little 45 degree piece. I actually cut this from a one by, but you can use whatever you need. As long as it's 45 degree angle, you can now take this and store it right on your wall. I recently put together a safety video where I've referenced how important it is to have a fire extinguisher, but I also wanted to have an easy access position. So I created a simple little box holder with a little slope on the side so the fire extinguisher can fit right inside you can easily grab it. You don't have to worry about the wood getting in your way. But I also made this heavy duty using three quarter inch plywood so that I don't have to worry about if it gets bumped, that it will not hurt the fire extinguisher. I don't have to worry about it falling off the wall. Also, if you notice, I painted this in kind of a barn red so that it stands out just slightly from the rest of my materials, but it's not overwhelmingly different. In either case, that's a great way to store a fire extinguisher on your wall. With all the different configurations of glue that I might use in my shop or around the house, I needed some way to store this but keep it easy access. So I created this awesome little shelf. 
The shelf is very simple. I just built it large enough to be able to house at least my largest glue bottles, which I have a couple of, and all the other accessories. I still, I'm sure in the future we'll have more glue products, but for the most part, this should handle majority of it. It's real simple, real easy, and it's a great way to hang it up on your wall. Spring clamps. They can be great in the shop, but also a little challenge to store sometimes. That is, unless you create a little holder, like so. On the back here, I had a piece of plywood that I created a little dado and glued in a nice little support. That way, I can clamp all my clamps right to here. This works great for the large ones and the small ones, with the exception of the depth of the wood sticking out. It may need to be a little bit smaller, but that's a real simple, easy way to store your spring clamps. Now here's a real simple way to hold some of your crescent wrenches. You'd think they'd fall off easily, but the way we did it, they're nice and firm. I have a couple magnets for the large two, and then there's one single magnet for the last one. But there's a little bit more to it. Right here on these pieces of wood, we traced out the wood and used a bandsaw to cut it out to the best configuration as possible so that it fits and just hugs each one of these crescent wrenches. And that way you can easily put it on, you don't have to worry about them falling off, plus it just looks really good. Real simple design with some plywood on the backing to give it strength. Great way to store your crescent wrenches. A jigsaw is one of those great universal tools, but it can be a little bit of a challenge to store, especially with the blade sticking down here, unless you take it off every single time. So I created a nice little holder for this. Now this is a simple little holder that I have a shelf on top and a little shelf on the bottom. If you look at the top here, I created a little hole. Use just a Forstner bit to cut that out. And that allows me to take the blade and stick it right in there. And because it's a large hole, I can move this around. It's easy to take in and out. The little shelf and cubby hole down here is great for a little added accessories. Any additional blades, you can stick them right there. I have a little lip on here so nothing's gonna fall out easy. And that's just a simple and easy way to store your jigsaw. Allen wrenches are great tools to have around, but they're also real easy to lose and especially get mixed up with your other tools. So let me show you how to fix that. Now here's a simple little holder I made with some extra scrap wood I had left over from some other projects. I just made two rows. I drilled out each hole so that it's just barely bigger than the actual Allen wrench, and that way they fit nice and tight. I made it so it's a step down pattern here so you can easily see which size they are. And if you look in here, this front, actually is much higher than the back so that when the big tools are sitting in the back they don't look like they're oversizing everything else. But that's a real simple way to create a French cleat little setup for your island wrenches. Now here's a great way to make some hooks for your French cleat wall. I used some 3 quarter inch plywood that I just cut in a shape with a hook. I added backing to each one so that it gives it a little more strength and stability so it doesn't maneuver and get rocked back and forth attached a cleat to the back of it, and now with it hanging on the wall, it's a great way to hang whether it's your apron or anything else you might need for your shop. Whenever you're using French cleats, a lot of times your top cleat can be almost useless, especially because there's usually a short distance between it and the ceiling above. So to help that, I created a basic shelf using some L brackets and attached it some plywood. And by adding those two together and putting it up here, now allows me to put maybe some books or some tools or whatever I need so I can utilize that space. Here's a super simple idea for you. You can get some of those magnet strips, depending on the store, for just a couple bucks. If you take it and you reinforce it with some plywood, put a little cleat on the top of it, you can now hang that from your wall and you can put a bunch of random stuff right on it so you don't have to worry about losing things. This is a very simple and easy little project to make. When you're using French cleats, it's a great idea to utilize as much space as possible. But sometimes these corner areas just don't work well. In my case, I have a cleat coming in from each wall, but as you can tell, it's just really tight. So I created this simple little shelf that uses a cleat on both sides. And the ability to use that gives it a lot of strength. So I can put a lot of weight on there and it works out just great. It's a very simple shelf, very simple to build, and I hope you can use it too. French cleats, they're awesome. Great way to store stuff on the wall, get them off the floor, get it off your shelves, get it off your workbench. So be as efficient as possible, build some French cleats, have fun, get out in your workshop and build something. So I 
Ow! <laughs> Try it again. I tried to keep from falling until it was last second, so hopefully we can cut right there. <laughs>